What is up guys? How you doing? It's your boy Louise 21 back again with a different type of video. Not quite a vlog, just a little chat with you guys seeing as I don't do the podcast at the moment. I'm taking a break from that. So I just thought I'd you know do a little one to one. Or I, well one to one hundred and seven in you guys' case. Um thanks for all the new subscriptions. I uh, love you guys, all, you, all 107 of you. Uh, yeah, it's good to be still going after three years. Like, uh, I can't believe it still. I was looking back at some of my older videos. Um, you know, as you do, as a YouTuber. Or well, some don't, but uh, I, I'm a bit nostalgic. You know, uh, even though you shouldn't look back, you shouldn't go back. Uh, you should only look forward, but um, the past helps you with the present and the future. Um, that's how I see it anyway and look at the world today the, the problems we're dealing with are coming up from the part that is from the past all the Black Lives Matter movement all the protesting the riots to everything um, and it culminates it's culminating now basically that's the freshman there's just nothing like a frosty bottle of coca-cola so much that still to this day I feel that all this thing and corona at the same time what a year this is for change in our lives from you know what have we learned from cleanliness you know wash your hands to you know Carol Baskin killing her husband for sure she did it, we know. Um, to all the series on Netflix, um, to lockdown, you know, you know, social distancing, Black Lives Matter, when did they not? But now it's coming apparent, you know, everyone's an activist. So many people that never said Black Lives Matter in their life suddenly are saying this, so many white people apologizing when it's not directly their fault, it's generations ago. But these issues are prominent today and racism has not gone anywhere in so many years. I mean, I want to go back and talk about the 92 riots in Los Angeles, Rodney King, you know, how he was, you know, beaten up by five or six officers um, and how they all got away with it um, very lightly, you know. They said it wasn't racially charged assault um, and they said the guy went for their weapons and he was a threat and all this. And he was beaten, horribly beaten, bruised and injured. And there was out outrage in Los Angeles at the time from the black community um, and people in general that were upset. Uh, but back then it was very much... I've seen uh, documentaries about it and it was very much black versus white, sadly. And it was a riot, basically, not a protest like we're seeing today started as a protest um, but it got pretty uh, aggressive and that era was really tense and you know 28 years later here we are and you know people that have never said it before are saying black lives matter when maybe they just feel guilty and trying to avoid being accused of being racist in the past certain people and you've got Donald Trump at the top of it all just making things worse when he says things like when the looting starts, the shooting starts. The people that are looting and robbing stuff are nothing to do with the protesters. It just happens to be that they're taking advantage of it and using it, using that as cover to loot and rob and burn local businesses run by people of minorities unfairly. So they say Black Lives Matter, you're burning their businesses down. You're burning Latino businesses down uh, what's that achieving? You know, you can say all this and burn all this stuff, but what are you actually achieving? And the statue in Bristol of the former slaver that was taken down, um, rightly so, because that shouldn't be up. Um, but people are seeing it as vandalism. Yes, um, the vandalism on the Winston Churchill statue. He's a, he's a hero in England, held a hero for what he did, defeating the biggest racist of all, Hitler. Um, but he was racist in his own ways. And 
involved in, in the Boer War in Africa and much and you know a lot of other things that went on there much more than that um, and he is he was racist in some of the comments he made we have to admit that um, defacing his statue is deface is trying to go against what it stood for this racism and this you know wanting to take over other countries something the British the French the Romans many people have done over the decades and in all those things there's been enslavement of some kind um, and treating people less than human in all those societies over the years the Romans, the Egyptians you name it, there was slavery and the history in America from the past um, has fueled a lot of the racism of today uh, a lot of things that really sicken me and sicken a lot of people um, because yeah when you, don't don't be one of the people who just say oh yeah all lives matter that's not the point we know that but at the moment black lives are suffering and not being seen as equal to other lives which is unfair and when you have people that are supposed to keep law and order and protect and serve do what they do to people now it's a disgrace But don't take this out on every police officer you see. They're not all in that category of racist people that don't deserve to be on Earth. They're, a lot of them are good, decent people. Most of them are there to protect and serve you. Um, here anyway. Even though you couldn't always say that here. But I know a lot of people that are police officers and they're great stand-up citizens that don't even swear. You know, they're great people and I wouldn't imagine this sort of thing to happen. Like, looking at the way they are as people. Great people, regardless. Badge or no badge. But in America, it seems like some small minorities of police feel the way these four or five guys, these officers that I'm not going to mention, or name, you know, there's people like that, sadly. And racism is not going to go away overnight. We're not going to click our fingers, burn everything down, and it's going to be fine. It's still going to be there. People will always judge other people that aren't from where they're from. Sadly. We just need to fight for equal rights. That's the thing here. The 13th Amendment in America needs to be reviewed because it was always against the black community. From Nixon to Reagan, Nixon's war on crime, he called it, was... A tactic to just uh, call black people criminals and get them in prisons, you know, which is part of the Thirteenth Amendment, which is is wrong, you know. It's a conspiracy, not even a conspiracy. We know it. People know it for a fact that if you're a black person in America, you get pulled over by the police. You have to understand there's a risk of your life, and that's terrible. As a white person, you don't have that thought in your mind ever. But sadly, black people in America do. Even here, the stop and search, uh, it's more likely to be a black person that is searched. And this has got to change. It's got to change. And yet, burning stuff down is not the way. I don't agree with that. If I wasn't at risk, I'd be out there. Yes, it's a contradiction of corona, but this is more, this is important. Like, this is a disease that's been around since the dawn of time, sadly, and it won't go away overnight. Corona is here, yes, been here for a while, and pretty soon it'll be gone. And then, that's it. Racism is more of a difficult disease to cure, far more difficult, and far more toxic, and deadly. And I know that sounds hypocritical, but trust me on this, it, it's important. And, yeah, a lot of things I'm seeing are annoying me online. Some things are not. Some things are inspiring me, like seeing police joining with protesters together uh, for the same cause. It is, it's amazing to see. And there's positivity there. And if I look back at the, the Rodney King incident in 92, in those 28 years, things have changed, but not nearly enough. Because these officers, obviously 
they committed a murder today, um, recently, and yes, they went to prison, rightly so. Those guys back in the day that beat up Rodney King, they should have gone to prison too, for a long time, because it was racially charged for me. And you can look into it yourselves, and look into some of the things I've mentioned, fact check if you want. But yeah, you've got to know the story before you just go out and say Black Lives Matter. You need to know how people have suffered. Like, yes, as a white person, you can be fed up of hearing about racism, but you're not experiencing racism on a daily basis in every job you get at school, you know, every moment of your life. As a white person, you're not experiencing that. And if you don't think white privilege exists, then you're an idiot. Um, and as white people, we are responsible, well, our early generations are, but we have to fix the problem. Everyone has to fix the problem. It's not just up to black people or white people. It's all of our problem, the whole world. It's everyone versus racism. And I just wanted to talk about it and yeah, just let out how I'm feeling. I don't condone putting down statues, despite what that statue represented in Bristol. Um, yes, it's the system that is designed to discriminate and go against certain people. And it's that is what we have to attack and fight for change. You know, smashing up stuff. Yeah, what's that going to achieve? What's that actually going to achieve? It's fundamental change we need. And there needs to be these conversations. Talking is the way, you know. It's in human nature to talk. Talk through things and work out the best way forward, hopefully. And yeah, that's just my view on it, really. Make what you will of it. If you don't think white privilege is real, then unsubscribe now. If you are a racist, please go elsewhere. I don't want your views or your subscription. Um, yes, you're going to be against all the burning and the protesting. Uh, and Well, not the protesting, but the, uh, the violent side of it. You can be against that. But it doesn't change the message that is trying to be delivered here. I saw people like John Boyega on the street so emotional about this because it's affected his whole life, like many people. The colour of my skin doesn't affect my life in that way. What I can aim, what I can physically do, does. But this is a far more worse problem, racism. Ableism is a problem too, I admit it. And I've talked about it in the past. And maybe I don't fully understand it myself. But people are being treated differently because they're different. That's how it relates. And it's not good. It's not a good feeling to feel less than. I don't feel less than personally. But some people make you feel that way. And it's, it's not acceptable. Never has it been, and nor should it be any longer. That's the end of my rant, guys. Gone on longer than I thought, to be honest. But I'm just glad I spoke to you guys. It was needed. Ah, uh, here we are, guys. At the end. That's it, guys. Um, I don't know when I'm going to bring the podcast back. Um, I don't really want to talk about this. I do want to talk about this issue the issue of racism a lot more but I make vlogs you know that is me I make podcasts but for the moment I'm gonna see we're gonna see what happens and I'll talk more on the subject of course it needs to be talked about but I don't always have a rant every week you know because you're here to enjoy but I just just wanted to get you know give you my thoughts on the whole situation get that across to you and maybe I didn't put it out there in the right way for that I'm sorry if you didn't if it wasn't the, the best way of putting everything but yeah that's it that's what's in my brain given to you guys kind of it's all mixed up in it <laughs> anyway guys stay up stay humble keep fighting for what you believe in don't give up remember it's everyone against racism let's join together and do what's right and don't burn the city down, please. We need to live in it after. Thank you. Peace.
Thank you for watching, and good night.